Carp Talk. Proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp. Well, when it comes to winter carp fishing, every single bite counts, whether you're after big ones or just going out for a day session and letting the bobbins rattle. In this episode of Extreme Carp Fishing, we're going to be looking at honing our winter tips and tactics. We've come down to this place in deepest, darkest Essex. This is Chigra Fisheries, where hopefully we're going to get a bite or two. And joining me on my journey today is a man that knows a thing or two about this place. It is Steve Spurgeon. Well, rather than just joining us for a list of tips and tactics, you're coming on a journey with us today. What we're going to be looking at is that, the mindset of what you do when you are into carp fishing. Firstly, positive mental attitude. Let's keep keen on how we're going to do it and what we're going to do. But also, let's live the session and see how we make our micro changes. Now, Steve, come to you now. You've got a default method, no doubt, that you're going to start yeah, off with. everyone has, haven't they? Um, but I'm really looking forward to see what you do and what I do over the next 24 hours, really, in a way of tactics. And I'm sure it's going to be this certainly going to be some different things here uh, and I'll certainly be sort of ringing the changes if need be. I'm sure you'll do the same. Absolutely. How often are we going to be recasting? How often are we going to be changing baits? What are we going to do? At the moment we don't know yet. I haven't got my rods out. I'm going to be casting out very soon and we'll run through what goes on through the course of a coming into winter 24 hour session. Well, I've jumped into this swim because Steve's just next door but one, and we can have a bit of a social, which is what carp fishing, of course, is about, as well as trying to catch a few fish. But let's take a look over there. The water in front of me, what have we got? Well, for a start, there's a couple of islands directly out in front of me. They scream carp, but they will have done to the bloke that was in before and the bloke that was here before that as well. So I need to do something just a little bit different with that area because the fish, although they'll hang around there, will feel pressure. The biggest tip I can give is if you go into an island, go as close as it's possibly safe to do so. If you can get that little bit closer than everyone else, you've got more chance of picking fish up. One rod sorted. This is a two rod water. I've got to look for somewhere else. And there's a gap between two islands in the open water area out there. That screams carp to me as well. That's a gateway where if the fish are moving through in that open area, they'll probably pass through there. So I'll look for a gravel spot in that open water area and try and put a bit of bait around it and encourage the fish to feed in there. Elsewhere there's a big expanse of open water. I'm going to dismiss the margins because I know they're quite shallow. I want to go a little bit further out so I'll find another little spot somewhere, sprinkle a bit of bait on that but it will be within sight of my bivvy. I'm not going to walk up the margins and bait up because that means I've got to go and check it and if I'm checking it, even if I check it once an hour it's only going to be for about five minutes an hour. If I put it within sight of where I'm fishing I can see exactly what's going on on that spot and elsewhere although this is a two rod rule I'll have three rods made up, one of them will be an opportunist mugging rod if I see a fish move anywhere, it's going to get a bag on its head, and that's a great way of catching winter carp. Now, I'd normally put a solid PVA bag out there. It would be the easiest thing to cast it and get perfectly presented, but we've got a crosswind coming across. I've only just arrived at the lake. The chances are it would take me half a dozen casts, and because it's coming towards darkness now, I don't want to do that. It's too tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this little setup here. Just talk you through the rig. Inline lead, short snare hook link, a little bit of tungsten putty on there just to get it sunk down on the bottom and then I'm fishing a pop-up. Now the reason I'm fishing a pop-up is that there's leaves around on the bottom over there, I would expect, and as a result I just want to keep the hook point off the bottom. I've got a small number eight shot, a little bit of tungsten putty, a fairly big kicker, and then a small yellow pop-up that's going to sit just off the bottom once it's landed safely out there. 
rather than sticking it into a solid PVA bag it's going to go into a little stocking mesh bag with some pellets and that has been soaked in cell liquid to add a bit more added extra attraction in there. You'll also see there's a small orange bait in there too, that's my dummy bait. Put that in, the fish might have a look at it, see the orange bait, see the yellow one, confuse them a little. Does it work? Lord knows, probably giving the carp too much credit, but it puts a little bit more confidence up in my mind. So, I'm going to hook that on. I've got quite a big hook on that, it's a size 5. I want them, if I'm going to hook them, to stay on and not fall out, so I don't really fine down too much. And that's it, it's a bit messy, it's a bit grubby, but it's going out in the pond. Have a crack at this, come on, Yuzi. Courage, that's what you need at a time like this. Courage. Well, that's literally been out there about a minute. That had been out there a minute. I didn't even have the alarm on, mate. Just see the, the line tight, and I'm fishing locked up. So, quality. Oh, he's in the bag. Good, good man. Nice one, Rob. One known for the spur. Yeah. Sure, anyway. <laughs> I've been here a few minutes. Look at that. Six boys roll, mate. God, I tell you. It's mad, isn't it? Winter this time of year. You want to get the rods out as quick yeah, as possible. Yeah. There's Just all sorts of disturbances. You, the, right, the right spot at the right time, and yeah, yeah. it must have landed Bingo. right on its head, you know. Right, it's not the biggest fish in the world, but he's a lovely little fish, he's a lovely clean fish, and it puts me 1-0 up on Rob, which is a result. I've got to remember as well that I'm playing the home advantage here, so I need to beat him convincingly. Right, well this is the rig that's put me 1-0 up on Rob, so let's take a good close look at it. Starting off with, I've got about 4 foot of fluorocarbon illusion leader on there. That comes down to a leg clip setup, an anti-tangle sleeve, Cortex hook length, with a piece of putty moulded in the middle to keep it all pinned down and then the pop-up rig itself I've got an SSSP hook on there which is a straight point short shank hook uh, a micro rig ring swivel which is the baits attached to to give it plenty of movement and then half a wivy sleeve there where I've just cut one down there it gives it a nice aggressive curve to make sure that ends up in the bottom lip so like I say it's put me one nil up on Rob not that it's any kind of competition I know it's about that for typical, that cast is like a dartboard out there, it's got to be on the treble 20, I've got it in there and within literally minutes of getting in, look what comes along, marvellous, a bream, it's getting dark, I want to get that rod back out on that spot and I don't want to be pestered by these things, but occupational hazard of pellets I suppose. Right, light's fading fast so I need to get some bait out. I haven't had the opportunity yet, I had that fish early on just a single hook bait cast out, just a small bag. So, I've chosen my baited area, so I'm getting some bait out on it now. Right, you're probably wondering why I've actually chose this swim. Well, one of the main reasons is, it gives me a lot of walk to start with, but also, it's almost a mirror, mirror image of, of Rob's swim. And the last thing I want is Rob turning around and saying I had the best swim. So, there's no argument there to start with. Um, but again, like Rob, it gives me an island to go at and it also gives me part of the gap between the two islands. So any fish moving from one part of the lake to the other are going to end up coming very close to my bait. So, I'm going to give them about half a dozen spots, maybe eight, not too mad. Just enough to get a few fish feeding now, I should get a bite. Steve had taken a 1-0 lead at home and unfortunately there were no floodlights and just when I thought I'd equalised, this happened. Another bream. That's what I like about that Rob, he's consistent. So, the bream like yellow baits. Mm. They like, they like white, it. Like any bait. Baits. They like rice. <laughs> Perhaps they're getting on the rice, mate. They like pellets. <laughs> they like it all. They like whatever cells. you're giving them. They like it. Yeah, they like cell. <laughs> they, like, they just like it, don't 
Well, there you go, Spurge and the rods are out. It's just got dark now. I tell you what, it's taters as well, it, isn't it? It is cold. If you notice that wind's swung around a little bit, it's more easterly now as well. So yeah, it's pushed me at the island a bit more now. Yeah, isn't it? yeah <laughs> wind in east, fishing east, and all that. But uh, yes. yeah, I make the cast a little bit harder, mate. Yeah, well, you, you might just... want to step back a foot or two when you're doing that cast in yeah, the dark. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon so. That's a bit tricky. But anyway, one carp for you, two bream for me. Yeah. So it's a start, it's not Ooh. the best of start that I wanted, but you've had a carp. No, let's hope it stays that way. I'll keep catching a carp and you keep catching a brook, Because <laughs> <laughs> we're not competitive in any way, shape or form. Not at all. Do you know what I like fishing with, or do you know what I like about fishing with you? Well, nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I have a dilemma. I've got the bait out, I've got my spot sorted, I've put some pellets out there, I've put my little spot mix out there, but I keep getting breamed. The big question now, is do I move on to boilies or do I just try and wade through them? Still early enough, so I think it's gonna be that again. I'm gonna get the old white bait out with a bit of pellet, try it once more, and if I have a bream on this again, then that's gonna be it, I'll write it off. But where there's bream, there might be carp. It's just a war of attrition now. How far do you go through the bream before you actually surrender? Because <laughs> I am getting battered by them at the moment. But uh, there we go, one more go, and that's it over to the boilies if this produces another bream. Right, Steve's diary time now. It's 11.30. I've just had this one. It's 18, or oh, just over 18 pound. Lovely chunky little mirror there. All right. Had that over the baited area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it straight back because it's absolutely freezing. I'll get back in my bag. Carp Talk, proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp. Carp Talk, proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp. Well, if I look like I've had no sleep and been dragged through a hedge backwards, it's probably because, well, I've had virtually no sleep as a result of the bream, and because of them, I feel like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. No carp activity for me. I know Steve had one last night, but no carp activity for me. So a bit of a change in tactics is required now. I've moved off those PVA bags of pellets and I'm going to go on to this. This is just a straightforward single bait. You'll notice also that I've moved on to a clip system. I'm taking the lead size down a bit just so it's easier to punch it to that island. I know it sounds strange actually going down in weight, but it just means it's a bit more controllable. I've then got a, a semi-stiff link, that's a cortex with the last inch taken off, small shot, size 8 there, a little bit of tungsten and then a small bright yellow pop-up. I'm fishing single baits, oh, probably bream again, just heard a hoot down there, <laughs> typical. Um, using very small single baits like this means that that will kick out quite nicely, it's balanced well and without having that pellet around it, it's got a bit of visual attraction as well. And what I'm going to do now is move off the face of the island onto a little gap between two small islands and I'm going to put this just either into it or just in front of it and hopefully that might produce a wandering carp. But it's night only normally on this water, daytime you get a few bites but not that many at this time of year so we're really up against it now. Let's get it out there. I haven't had a bite for a while now, so it's obviously been quiet out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a rechuck. Uh, the rig's the same as before, but I've got one addition to it. I've added a paste bomb. And what this does, it's like a lead, but it's got grooves running right away through it. And you can pack paste in there. Still very aerodynamic, but that, what that will do is that will leak off attraction in the water for hours. Right, so I'm going to get this back out. Just, just short the islands where I want to be. It's fighting well this one. Let's hope it's a, a slightly better fish, but the way things have been going, it's good to get one. Absolutely. Where was that one then? That, Just quiet through the night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really quiet. There was a, I was woken up about half past two in, in the morning by a fish crashing out down to the left, short. Where there was no wind on the water, I could see exactly where it was. 
So uh, I brought the rod in that was over the bait and uh, dropped that on it. With just the same tactic, little bag, a crushed cell in it and a, and a pop-up and it's been out there a few hours but it's gone now. Is it going to be one of the better ones? Make record 36 pounds. <laughs> just to rub salt in the wounds. <laughs> oh, it's not too bad. Let's see if I can get in there and knock him yeah. off. Do your best. <laughs> knock him off, knock him off. Keep coming. Keep Here we go, Rob. And it's in nice the back one, of mate. the net. Well done. Well. Extend that lead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that. It's um, Ooh, it's, it's proving to be quite tricky, isn't it, at the moment? It is. I've, uh, well, I've not known it to be this hard. Yeah. But I suppose that's Sod's law, isn't it, that... Uh, that's going to happen when you come down with a camera. Zero that baby in. Yeah. I reckon 18.6, what are you going to go for? Well, I could really cheat and go 18.7. <laughs> I'll put a little <laughs> bit of space in between it and go 18.12. 18.12, right. Do you believe Ooh. it? Hey, look at that. I didn't want to tell it far. <laughs> when I looked at it, I thought it might, but then I thought, nah, 21.7. Mm, bigger than I thought. Absolutely. So, there's one of the Chibra 20s. Hey, yeah. the Chibra Massive. All right. Let's have a proper look at her then. 21 one pound plus of Chigbra Miracarp. Lovely clean fish, fought really hard. But you can see when you look at the fins, it's quite a fighting machine shape. Cracking. We'll get her back in the lake, get that rod back out, see if we can nick another one. Well, I think it's fair to say that I'm being right royally tonked by Mr Spurgeon at the moment. We've only got a few hours left before we've got to disappear. And to me, it seems quite clear there's not an awful lot in the middle of the pond. There's a guy fishing opposite me. He's caught nothing. And of the one or two guys that have been on the lake, they've been catching from the quiet bays. So, as you can see, I've now got a new house for the last two hours. There was a chappy in here earlier, came down for the morning, just a nice little short session, hit it well, caught a couple of fish, not looking an opportunist gift horse in the mouth. I've steamed in here straight after he's gone to see if I can save a little bit of face. So, slight rig change, bit of lead core, pendant lead, short, stiff hook link, and then boilie with a small bag of boilie on it as well. I'm going to swing this out to the entrance to the mouth of the channel over there, and it might be one of these times where just an hour in the right place is worth 10 hours in the wrong one. You never know. So we just flick that out there towards the reeds, just a light overhead cast, just falling short. That'll do it. Minimal disturbance. I haven't got time to pack my gear up and get everything round here. So I'm literally just bringing a couple of rods and a landing net for the moment. The rods can stay on the floor. The line's going to be slack down there and I'll just stand by them and hope above hope that I can try and save a bit of face and catch a fish, ideally four fish, to beat Mr Spurgeon. Oh, he used to smell, wasn't he? I feel like wolves playing Chelsea at the moment. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Ooh. He's in just. <laughs> That's it. I'll possibly, yeah, there we go. Possibly That's caught um, one of the smallest ones in the lake there, mate, I reckon. Right, one of Chigba's babies, but still a welcome sight. And it also puts me another one up on Rob. So I won't hang about, I'll get a straight back and try and bag another one. Well, Spurgeon dying stages and look at it. Well, truly a last gasp, but mate, there's not long left to go. Just, and uh, uh, I've managed to just nick one out. I thought it was pretty much finished, to be fair. I didn't expect any more bites now. It's not over till it's over, mate, is it? Well done, and Rob. there it goes. There she is. Well, we thought it might be 20, but it's not. It's about 19 pound, two ounces that's gonna settle on. Yeah, 19 pound, two. Nice fish, just off the 20 mark. Right, well, there you go. 19 pound, two ounces of chickpea carp. Another welcome sight. Certainly not for Rob though. All I can say to Rob is, who are you? Who are you? Now I'm going to get her back. Well, as we entered stoppage time, it was obvious that the score didn't need to be spoken about. Steve, nevertheless, decided to make a trip over to my swim for a little post-match analysis. Coming in, Husey. Time waits for no man. It doesn't wait for you either. I believe 24 hours is up, mate, and I brought well, you a little present. 
I thought you might want to rub some of that into your wounds. <laughs> very, very kind of you. Thank you very much. I'm prepared on this occasion to admit, I won't say defeat, but that you've had a better day than I have. Um, and it just goes to show you can still have a laugh when it gets cold. The most important thing is try, move, try, move. Don't put too much bream food in. Um, but really enjoy your winter carp fishing. There's plenty of options out there, and I think it's fair to say we've we have had a good Oh, we've had a really, yeah, it's been really enjoyable. It's been tough going, but you know, we've made the most of it, and yeah, it's been good fun, mate. Well, as with all competitions, there's always a little bit of extra time, so. Although Spurge has gone home, it was looking right for a bite. I've stayed on just a little bit longer and the bag on the corner of the channel has produced a bite. Here he comes, he wants to get underneath. Oh, and there he is. He's in the net. Thank you very much. Happy days. Never give up. Kills on, and I've got a lovely little tip for you to do with chod rigs. A lot of people lose a lot of fish on chod rigs because they have, their hook link is too straight. Here I'm going to show you how to curve your hook link really nicely and really easily so your chod becomes more effective. And here, here we are. That's your straight chod rig. What I'm going to do is put a nice progressive curve in there, and here's how we do it. Very simple tool very easy to use. Stick your hook link, your straight hook link, on there like so. Tiny little pin, nice and tight like that. And this is the reason why we've got the kettle on. We're going to steam this now. Watch your fingers. Just steam it nice and gentle like that, making sure you don't burn your fingers. Get as much steam on that hook link as possible. Just like that. Not for too long, and there we go. Have a look at that. Perfect chod rig, perfect curve. That will land you a lot more fish. And the good thing also is, if you want to make up three or four, five or six of these and store them, you store them on your little tool that we used before. Just stick it back in like that, put the pin in, take the end holder out like so, straight in there like that, cap on like that, screw your top on, in your bag, job done. There you go, lovely little tip for your chod rigs. Carp Talk, proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp.